Okay, so we're gonna start off with two reels that Daiwa introduced after this year's Japanese fishing shows. And they pretty much did this exact same thing last year as well when they came out with the Alphas Air TW. Now the first reel is the Steez A TW Hyper Long Cast, or HLC for short. Now you can probably tell by the name of this reel exactly what it's built for, and that is long distance casting. Now Daiwa did two things to this Steez A to achieve this. Now the first thing they did was they implemented the boost feature onto the MagForce Z braking of this reel. So just like the SV boost, Daiwa attached another spring on the front of the rotor in order to push it back farther away from the magnets after the initial spike in spool speed at the beginning of the cast so that there's less braking on the second half of the cast, theoretically giving you longer distances. And the rotor on this spool looks very short as well. Now the second thing they did was they increased the diameter of the spool. So instead of 34 millimeters on the standard Steez A, the HLC will have a 36 millimeter spool. Now there is no mention on Dial's website whether they used different magnets or not, but they do say this reel is designed for lures that are one half ounce and up. Probably due to having less brake force. Now everything else seems to be standard Steez A, but with a slightly darker paint scheme and dark blue accents. So very stealthy and sleeper like. Now when Daiwa announced this reel, I had already purchased my Zillion 1000 with the SV Boost. Now had I known this reel was coming out, I would have got this reel instead of the Zillion, so that kind of pissed me off. Now the Steez A does have a couple of problems that I see. Now the first problem is that you can see by this video footage, Daiwa pulled a Shimano and did some cast measurements inside an indoor facility. But unlike Shimano, I can't see anywhere in this video where they showed us the results. Now if the results were impressive, surely they would have made them public. Now the second problem is that Shimano came out with the new, smaller, more compact Antares DC, which is also made for long distance casting. Now my money is on the Antares dominating the Steez casting real world lures. Now both of these reels are actually supposed to be released this month and I'll be eagerly awaiting for the Japanese YouTubers to put them both to the test and hopefully against each other in some cast battles. Now this next reel is something I really didn't see coming from Daiwa and that is a brand new, super budget friendly baitcaster called the PR100. And this reel is probably going to be around $50 when it comes out in Japan. Now a couple of years ago, Daiwa came out with their 380 series reels that were apparently made for them by Doyo in China using Doyo frames and technology. Now these three reels were supposed to fill in the gap that Daiwa had in the sub $100 baitcaster class. Now this new PR100 does not appear to be Doyo made, but it sure does look like a Shimano. Now look at the swept drag star, the overall shape of the frame, and especially those knobs. They are pretty much identical to the big comfy Septom knobs that you'll find on the Corrado K and several other Shimano's. So who knows, maybe Shimano is selling Daiwa these knobs. Now I suspect this reel is probably being made in Daiwa's Thailand factory because it appears to be sporting the same thumb bar as the original Tatula 
and also more importantly it will feature Daiwa's proprietary fixed mag force braking that is externally adjustable via the very Daiwa like external dial. So this reel, at least in these very few pictures that I see, looks a lot more expensive than its price suggests. Now I'm not sure if this reel is coming to America or not since Daiwa already does have the $59 CC80 already for sale here. Okay, so it's time to talk about the last Daiwa that we're going to talk about. Now in Japan, Daiwa announced the Tatula 300 and 400 sizes, but here in America, we only got the 300 size. Well, it appears that we now have the 400 size as well, but instead of being a Tatula, Daiwa gave it purple accents and calls it the Pro Rex. Now, I personally think that the Tatula color scheme looks better, but if you want more information on this reel, go check it out on Tackle Warehouse's website because it's already listed there. Okay guys, so we have some major news from Abu Garcia and that is that they are coming out with an all new Black Max Baycaster. Now this is major news because the current Black Max is probably still the best selling baitcaster in the world. Now this reel is not listed on any website just yet, but I can tell by these pictures that the new Black Max will be sporting the Roxani frame. Now you can see they are keeping the red and black color scheme, which is pretty synonymous with the Black Max by now. And the only change that I see is that they have reduced the spool size from 33 millimeters to 32 millimeters. But it definitely looks like a much better looking reel than the previous model, at least in my opinion. Now, since they are updating the Black Max, naturally they are doing the same to the more expensive Pro Max. Now, as I said earlier, I don't see these reels listed on any Abu Garcia website, but I'm pretty confident that they will be announced and introduced at this year's ICAST show. Okay, so we're going to end this tackle news video on the reel that probably got you to watch this video, and that's the Shimano Corrado BFS. That's right, a bait finesse Corrado. Now, there's really only four pictures of this reel out right now, and they are all on Shimano Europe's website. Now, when I saw this reel, I wondered if it was going to be a Scorpion BFS repainted and rebadged as a Corrado, but after studying the pictures, you can see that the spool is not as ported as the Scorpion BFS spool. And this reel is probably the exact same reel as the up and coming SLX BFS spool and all. So that means it's going to have the FTB braking system and a clicking drag. But one difference I do see is that the Corrado BFS is sporting a beefier standard Shimano handle versus the more finesse oriented handle on the SLX. Also, the Corrado BFS will have two more bearings versus the SLX. And one feature that is listed for the Corrado is something called Silent Drive. Now, Silent Drive appears to just be Shimano tightening up the tolerances and removing any kind of play and clicking noises from the reel. Now, I suspect that's where those two extra bearings are gonna go, and that's gonna be in the knobs in order to handle that. Now, once again, this reel seems to only be listed on Shimano Europe's website. Now, there are a couple of things strange about that. Now, first of all, I think the Corrado name started for the American market. So why introduce it in Europe first? Maybe it's because Shimano doesn't think true bait finesse reels will sell here in America, and they're probably right. 
Now, the other thing that is strange about that is that from what I've seen, spinning reels dominate in Europe. I mean, I think they dominate worldwide, but especially in Europe. But, however, there is a fast-growing bait finesse scene happening in Europe, and maybe this is Shimano trying to capitalize on that by offering something a lot more budget-friendly. But who knows, maybe Shimano USA will surprise us and introduce this reel at this year's iCast. Alright guys, that's it for this edition of Tackle News, and thanks a lot.